Kwejo and the Brass Man's Secret, a tale of old Ashanti wisdom and gold, written by Meshach Asari. Foo, foo, foo. Kwejo worked the bellows. They blew streams of air into the furnace, which made the coals glow red and hot and crackling sparks fly all over the place. It was Saturday again, and Kwejo was helping Papa to make little brass figures called gold weights. Elsewhere in the small Asante town, other boys were just as busy. They were weaving brightly colored kente and stamping clever adinkra patterns on large pieces of cloth. Making gold weights is not easy. First, wax is modeled into tiny figures. Then the wax figures are covered with clay. Papa usually does much of the work while Kojo is away at school. But he always has to help with the most difficult part, the casting. Through casting, the little wax figures are turned into little brass figures like magic. It all starts with heating the clay molds in the furnace, then picking them up carefully with tongues. Papa pours out the molten wax. The wax figures have left their exact forms inside the clay molds. Then they have to melt some brass, so Kwejo works the bellows even harder. In the meantime, Papa sets the molds up, ready to be filled with brass. Perhaps other boys of this town, some 600 or so years ago, had worked just as hard to make gold weights too. It took about two hours of heating to melt the brass into white hot liquid. Papa lifted it as gingerly as a cat carries its kitten and poured it carefully into the clay molds. It was hot, sweaty work. But how exciting when later the clay molds were smashed and the little brass figures tumbled out. When they were cool enough, Papa and Kujo cut and filed and polished off the rough edges. Then Kujo said, Shee! They look like a crowd of tiny people at a great festival. Papa agreed with a smile. Later, Kweju left the workshop to help Mami and Akuswa to prepare supper. But even as he pounded the fufu, he glanced every now and then at a tiny drummer that sat on a stool beside him. The moment Papa gave it to him, a very special friendship started between them. Meanwhile, in the town, looms were pushed into their corners after the day's hard work. The Adinkra stumps were packed away and the workshops closed. No one missed a Saturday night in that Asante town. Then the drums were brought out into the moonlight. And anyone who cared could sing and dance away into the night. So while the old people sat in small groups to smoke and talk together, boys and girls were free to dance. But that particular Saturday evening, Kwejo sat alone under the eaves of Papa's house. He had his friend in his hand and watching the moon beam glint 
of its little body, he said to him, How tiny you are! Yet when he looked closer, the dull eyes seemed to hold some secret, something ancient too. Four hundred years, six hundred years, even one thousand years. Will you tell me your secret? Could you ask in a whisper? Will you? The tiny lips seemed to pat and move. Could you shook all over with excitement when he heard the gentle voice? Yes, my young friend, I will show you my secret. Come with me. Close your eyes and come. The next thing Kujo saw was a heap of dust, dust with a soft luster of moonlight, gold dust, he said excitedly, gold dust. Little people were busy measuring it. They heaped some onto one tree of a scale and placed a horn blower on the other tree. The horn blower was much heavier. Drop the horn, a voice ordered. Without his horn, the blower weighed just the same as the gold. Quickly, they put the measured heap away into a casket and heaped more gold dust onto the tray. Fantastic, Quidja said. So you weigh gold? Yes, we wear gold, and we do something else. We say wise things to people. Oh, Quidja said with raised eyebrows. For a moment, he was dumb with surprise. But soon, something stirred him up. It was the gold. They were at the great court of a royal palace. Kojo managed to say to his friend, You know, I have never seen so much gold before. I wish I could have just a little to take home. Really? The drama asked pointedly. Then listen to this. Once, when the Ashantihene was preparing to attack a coastal tribe, his treasurer saw his chance. He took a great kudu casket full of gold dust and kept it for himself. But he died suddenly, telling his secret to no one. Oh, could you exclaimed. But we know where he hid the stolen treasure. We, the gold weights, know where it is and I am going to show you. Kujo could hardly stand the excitement. He will soon become the richest boy in the whole of Asante. He, Kujo, will soon have a kuduo full of gold dust, the purest gold. How wonderful! Then the drama turned to face him. He looked very serious as he spoke again. The treasure is hidden inside a dark recess in the shrine room. It is in the right side wall of the shrine house. The shrine room, Kujo repeated with a puzzled face. Yes, the shrine room, the drama answered. But my young friend, you must be brave and wise if you will find the treasure for yourself. Why, yes, wise and brave, Quijo said absent-mindedly. Good, the drama said finally. This is what you will do. You will walk straight on. At every door, there will be something. People, animals, things. Yes, Quijo urged. Now, all these say something, the drama warned. 
Symbols? Could you suggest it? Yes, symbols. In order to pass them, you will simply have to explain what they are. That should not be too difficult, could you thought? But he remembered something. An Asante is supposed to be brave. All right, I will give it a try, he said, bravely to the little drummer. Then good luck to you, my friend. Good luck. Could you start it off for the shrine room? In no time at all, he was at the first door. There he saw two boys in a tree. One boy was climbing the tree while the other pushed him. Could you knew the meaning, he said. If one tries to do a useful thing, he gets help. They kept quiet, so he moved on. At the second door, he saw a group of men in a canoe. He explained, a canoe must be paddled on both sides, and unity is strength. At a third door, he found two okro pots. He had to think for a while. But he soon remembered. The okra pod. Well, one does not see what is inside an okra pod. In the same way, one cannot know what someone else thinks in his head. The next symbol was rather weird. Two crocodiles were joined in the middle. But Kujo knew their meaning. How foolish it is to be greedy, he said and walked on. So far, it has not been too bad and Kujo was pleased with himself. He was only two doors away from the shrine room. The gold was there for him. When he reached the next door, there was a hunchback. He thought hard trying to remember. Then he remembered. Certain things cannot be changed once they have happened, like hunchback. Such things had better be accepted as they are. One more door and the whole kudu full of gold will be his. As he got closer to the shrine house, it suddenly seemed so tall with its peaked touch roof. On its white clay walls, there were many beautiful relief decorations. Strangely though, the door was open, but something about the place made him feel chilly and small. Koju was still wondering when a bird appeared in the open doorway. Its head was tucked away into its tail. Hmm, Kujo sighed as he thought very hard. Somehow, he could not explain the strange bird. Ostrich? Turkey? He wondered. The gold was now only a few paces away. Are you an ostrich? He asked, but the bird remained still. Perhaps the bird would not mind if he rushed past him and took the gold. So, like a brave Asante, he forgot about fear and took a hopping step towards the open door. Then it happened. The strange bird suddenly threw its head into the air and gave a deafening crow. There was nothing else to do but to run. The bird strutted after him, but it stopped when fortunately the drama appeared. What happened? He asked. The b bird, could you gasp? 
O, oh, the song of a bird. Kwejo repeated as he remembered. The song of a bird says, Learn from the past. Kwejo saw his friend's sad face through the tears that soaked his eye. The gold, he cried. The gold! But there was no time left. For they heard footsteps coming towards them. Palace is alarmed. My friend, the drama said, we must leave now. He raised his sticks and struck the drum. Bum, 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 and slowly. Everything began to fade away. Kwejo's eyes opened. He saw the town, bright in the moon's silvery light. Gradually, happy noises filled his ears. Come, Kwejo, it is time to go to sleep. Around him were real boys and real girls. The hard-working, noisy, happy children of the Asante town. As he stood up, he looked at the little brass drummer in his hand. There was something secret about him, something ancient too. It was a gold weight. Gold, he thought. Gold! It seemed to be somewhere, somewhere far away the end thanks for listening